Let's move on and have a look at some business news now on the programme. Charles Pellegrin is here. He's looking uh, into China and Africa's economic relationship uh, as the Forum on China-Africa cooperation kicks off in Beijing. So much of that relationship, Charles, been defined, isn't it, by uh, China's lending to African countries? Absolutely. China-Africa ties uh, defined by Chinese lenders. Massive infrastructure loans and investments uh, that were meant to help build up the continent's transport and energy architecture. I'm talking railways, ports, highways, public transportation systems, etc. Those are costly endeavors, and this translated uh, into huge sums of money being borrowed between 2000 and 2023, according to the Chinese Loans to Africa database run by Boston University's Global Development Policy Center. Chinese lenders provided over 1,300 loans worth a combined $182 billion to 49 countries and seven regional borrowers. And over $114 billion of that went to the energy and transportation sector. The peak year was 2016, as you can see there, when over $28 billion worth of Chinese loans commitments were made, uh, but has dramatically gone down since. So what happened? Well, uh, the uh, two major reasons for this, uh, Stuart, is that China has refocused a lot of its uh, focus and energy on boosting uh, its internal market and domestic demand as its economic growth levels are uh, slowing down. It's also uh, politically hard to justify spending huge sums overseas uh, in that kind of a context. And the other is uh, the debt situation of many African nations over the past few years. Countries like Zambia and Ghana have, have officially defaulted on their debts and many more are officially considered to be in a debt distress, that's meant that Beijing is less likely to take on financial risk. So what does the picture look like now, um, Charles, and what, is it, what does it uh, tell us as well? So in 2023, uh, Chinese lenders uh, made 13 new commitments, uh, uh, loan commitments worth about $4.61 billion. Those were made to eight countries and two regional financial institutions. And these actually represent a bit of an uptick. Uh, they're the biggest annual loan commitment since the COVID pandemic. More than half of these commitments actually went to African multilateral banks and nationally owned banks in Egypt. This is actually a way to mitigate financial risk in the face of uh, debt repayment concerns. And about $500 million worth went to three renewable energy projects uh, when there hadn't been any investments in energy for two years. This highlights a new approach by China, aiming for much smaller projects with potentially better environmental and social benefits. This goes to show that while Beijing has reduced its financial commitments to Africa, it's still looking for new ways to stay engaged on the continent. Something new now, a U.S. antitrust investigation into NVIDIA appears to be uh, deepening. Absolutely. Uh, Bloomberg reporting that the AI chip-making giant has received a subpoena from the Justice Department seeking information on potential monopolistic practices. Those include penalizing clients that use chips other than NVIDIA's and making it difficult for users to switch to rival suppliers. Other companies have also received subpoenas as the DOJ appears to be closing in on a formal complaint. Brian Quinn has the details. Is AI's top dog being brought to heel? NVIDIA has reportedly been issued a subpoena by the U.S. Justice Department amid a deepening probe. Bloomberg reporting that the DOJ suspects the chip-making giant of using monopolistic practices to keep clients from switching to other suppliers and penalizing those that don't use its chips exclusively. The company defending itself in a statement. NVIDIA wins on merit, as reflected in our benchmark results and value to customers who can choose whatever solution is best for them. The recent boom in artificial intelligence applications like ChatGPT has put NVIDIA's specialized processors in high demand, with sales more than doubling each quarter. Its annual revenues have skyrocketed from $16 billion in 2020 to more than $120 billion expected this year. Regulators are reportedly focusing on NVIDIA's recent acquisition of Run AI, which makes software that manages AI computing. Sales practices that favor clients who run NVIDIA products exclusively are also said to be under the microscope. Led by CEO Jensen Huang, NVIDIA's blockbuster performance has seen its share price more than double this year, briefly becoming the world's most valuable company. The probe comes at a pivotal moment for the industry, though, as the AI boom has been losing steam on markets over fears that its hype has far outpaced its actual economic benefits. Quick look at the markets now, Sean.
That's right, Stuart. Uh, first off, Nvidia stock has uh, continued a dramatic fall in after hours trading in the U.S. after Bloomberg's news broke. Uh, it had already shed over $279 billion in value during Tuesday trading as AI optimism uh, is seemingly starting to dwindle and uh, also because of worrying U.S. economic data, uh, which was published and has sparked fears of a recession. Um, let's look at the picture in Asia. Markets there plunging on Wednesday on the back of that U.S. tax sell-off and weak U.S. economic uh, data. Semiconductor stocks and chip stocks have been affected by NVIDIA's troubles. Suppliers like South Korea's Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix shedding value uh, and leading to significant losses on the Kospi, as you can see, down over 3% at the close. The Nikkei in Tokyo down over 4 and a quarter of a percent uh, at the close as well. And that trend has continued in Europe at the open uh, of the major bourses here. As you can see, the Paris CAC down uh, almost nine-tenths of a percent. The DAX in Frankfurt down over uh, 1% lower at the open. A bit dramatic. Thanks very much, Charles. Charles Pegram with the business news here on France 24.